Okay, so now we're going to look at some alkyne retrosynthesis. We're going to look specifically at carbon-carbon bond forming reactions. Um, so this is on page 64 of the workbook. It's messy, hold on. Page 64, we're looking at problem 6.2.0. Okay. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? Let's do, so let me kind of spell out what they're trying to do. They're saying propose an internal alkyne be used to make each molecule. So that's step one. And two, propose two carbon fragments. A haloalkane or alpha halide. And a terminal alkyne. Okay. So let's just look at the very first one that they have there. I'll try my best not to lose any carbons. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and number this thing. It's long and. Yep. Not how numbers work. There we go. So we've got an alkene internal to this molecule. And they're asking us to propose an internal alkyne that could be used to make it. And so if you learned your reactions, which I, th I think it's a really, really, really smart idea to learn your reactions before you work through these kind of synthetic videos, because you're going to get a lot more out of them, I think, in terms of being able to follow along. Um, regardless, uh, if we recall, we know this reaction. So how do we make an alkene? So the question, sort of what you want to conjure up in your head, is this flashcard or whatever you've made that says alkyne to alkene, okay? Um, now in this case, we have a trans alkene, and recall that we have multiple different ways of making alkene, so it's important to know whether we're making a cis or a trans one. And the way that reaction looks is if I take an alkyne, I wanna make the trans one, I'm gonna have to use that really weird reaction of sodium, I'm gonna use liquid ammonia, um, and the result from that will be the trans alkene. Okay, so we know then that if we're thinking backwards in time, because again we're doing retrosynthesis here, that we must have, have started out with this. Okay. We must have subjected that to this liquid ammonia sodium reaction to get the alkene. So the only way that we know how to do that. So you can infer from having a trans alkene that if you started with an alkyne, this was the alkyne you must have started with. Okay. From there, they're asking us to propose two carbon fragments that we could use to make this alkyne. So this, this is, you know, this gets a little bit harder here. The key is to kind of remember what we looked at previously, which is that 
that we can form a carbon-carbon bond by taking a terminal alkyne. I think I hopefully am being consistent with my pens, the colors, and we can attach it, we can snap it together with an alkyl halide or haloalkene or whatever. And so remember that reaction looks something like this. Let's see. You can see that already, even just trying to draw out the sort of, uh, what are you going to call it, like a canonical example, it can be challenging. So it just takes me a second to look at these. I, if I lose a carbon in the air or something, somebody just message me and let me know. Um, I don't really have a good suite of like video editing and st software and stuff set up yet, so I don't know if I can fix it, but I can at least send out an announcement so that people aren't confused. Um, but okay, so yeah, so we can take and we can snap, using that word, this part to this part. And what we'll form is a bond between this and this. All right, let's try and do that. So we're going to come back over here, and what this tells me is, if you, if you actually, before we come back over there, let me get one more. Make green. We get magenta. Uh, got a darker shade of green. If I take and I, I look at this, right? If I was starting with this molecule and trying to think backwards, I would say, okay, well, if I split it right there, right, I know that I cut it right there, and just kind of like when we're thinking about ozonolysis, we want to cap it, but instead of just capping both ends with oxygen or as a carboxylic acid, here we want to cap one end with a bromine, we want to cap the other end with a carbanion, right, so we're cutting it right there, and we're capping it with these two different things, that's allowing us to kind of think backwards. Yeah, so we can come back over here then. It's the same color. Should I use this one? Yeah, it's the one. Okay, we can come back over here and we can say, okay, what happens if we cut it right there? We're going to snip it in our mind. And we're going to say, okay. Cut it there. Means on the one side we're gonna have this. The other side. Oh. The other side I'm gonna have that. Okay. And so the side that's the alkyne, we want to cap that with our electrons. And the side that not our alkyne, this magenta side, we just want to put a halide there. So you can see now, that if I started with these and I react them together, what I would get out is the resulting alkyne. So this would be our scheme for building this alkene at the top. We would build it starting with these two fragments. We put those two fragments together, that gives the alkyne and then we can reduce it to the alkene. So let me write that out in the forward direction. So usually when we ask, you know, you guys won't be doing any paper exams, so it's not really going to matter. But, you know, I want you guys to learn <laughs> uh, and be prepared for the next course. Um, but, yeah, let's take a look at this. So what, what, what we would say on an exam typically is, like, how would you make this molecule? We'd probably be, like, in these questions, they're very open because these are practice problems. But in an exam question, we try to be a lot more precise because... There's a lot of you, and we have to grade all your exams, and we just can't have a very open-ended question. Um, but yeah, what you would want to do in the end is you would say, well, how would you synthesize this molecule? So the way that you would synthesize this molecule is you would say, okay, well, I start out with this and this. Okay, I am going to subject this to base 
So, you know, you're kind of writing now, it's just like with the chocolate chip cookies. Now that I've kind of inferred how to put, how to build my chocolate chip cookie, I know what I started with. Now I'm writing out my detailed instructions so, so that someone else can like legibly understand it. Um, so now I'm going in the forward direction so that if someone else were to read my recipe, it would be very clear what they're supposed to do. I'm going to take that, I'm going to deprotonate it. Okay, that's that part. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to add this other molecule to it. And we know that those two things are just going to kind of snap together because that's that's what happens in this particular reaction. Okay. Uh, and then we form this. But the problem is that the, the, the problem might ask you to, to build the alkene, so then you would take this and you would further subject it to another set of conditions, which would be sodium and liquid ammonia. And that would actually get me to the product I want. Let me just go ahead and number these to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, it looks like I was okay there. Let's double check this one. Okay, good. Okay. Um, yeah, I can number these as well. As you can see, carbon seven forms a bond to carbon eight. It's the bond between the anion the carbon with the anion on it and the carbon that's attached to the halogen. And voila, we get this out of it. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's our, that's our first kind of real synthetic problem and they get, they get grislier than this. Um, and I'll try and think of some more examples and videos to put together to help you guys with this as we kind of move forward. Um, but that's how retrosynthesis looks. I have, oh, you know what, actually, I got another good synthesis problem um, that I can work, and I'll, I'll work that in another video right now. I might probably, probably stop with the synthesis stuff for a little while.